I would imagine it's pretty impossible for you to describe what you're feeling now. Elation, um, deflation as he heads off to another career. Yes, uh, he's, he's dominated my life for the last three years, four years really, uh, in, in every way. The interest in him has grown and grown. Um, it will be interesting to see how life develops, but uh, how th lucky and thankful I, I am that we've had him and Prince Khalid has just enjoyed it so much. It's just really been off the scale. And of anyone you've seen at the closest quarters, this extraordinary relationship developed between the horse, Sir Henry Cecil, who we thought we knew all about, yeah. and now we've got a whole other chapter, yeah. and Prince Khalid, and the jockey. Yeah. It's, it's been an incredible dynamic. It has, and, and that's been the beauty of it in, in, in every way. I think Henry's brilliance, his staff, um, rarely ought to be mentioned. Shane Featherstonehall rides him every single day. Uh, Sandy looks after him. Mike Marshall, Steve the blacksmith. You know, it's it's all come together in this it's i always said it's just like an alignment of the stars the name bobby frank after bobby frankel and a horse who is who has the talent of almost untapped and unmeasured really at any point in in the lead up to, de to today could you doubt that he would be able to produce what he produced given the given the prevailing conditions well as you know we've always had unlimited confidence in him he gives us that he never has given us a moment's doubt in any of his races at any stage of his career so it's hard not to not to be carried away by that sort of wave of just brilliance and optimism really which he's he's brought to the game and with each victory he seems to have etched himself deeper and deeper into the public consciousness and further and further into people's hearts yes he has and i, I think the the sort of public reaction to him today was just the embodiment of that. Uh, and as, uh, for you as a, as a racing manager, how difficult has it been for you to contain your emotions? Because I said today, uh, looking at you across the, the paddock, well, Teddy can let the valve out a bit. <laughs> <laughs> um, Finally. He's, he, I think you, you sort of, when you're a child, you dream of, of a horse like this coming into your bedroom. <laughs> Uh, or at least into your life. Into your life. And, you know, when it happens, you find it, you can't believe it, really. And uh, um, the more it goes on, the, the, more, the more you really appreciate it, really, and, and enjoy it. I'm old enough to know that this is a, a one-off, once-in-a-lifetime experience. And for Prince Khalid, I suppose, the, the significance is not just a, a brilliant racehorse, but years and years of, of trial and error and preparation and yeah. the thought that goes into breeding a top-class horse and how you do it. It's an inexact science. Yeah. Three generations uh, back, uh, started in the sort of late 70s, um, early 80s, when Prince Khalid was building up the Stard Farm. And really, to, to finish up with a horse like Frankel, well, not finish up, but come up with a horse like Frankel is is just perfection, isn't it? Well, you say finish up because you know in your heart of hearts it, it can't get any better, can it? <laughs> well, we're always optimistic in racing, aren't we? Uh, but uh, I, I would I would think this, this is a, a pretty sort of um, career-defining moment for everyone involved with the horse. And presumably the team at, at the stud at, at Judmont uh, have, have been sort of planning how to, how to manage his, his stallion yeah. career. How, how complex is that? Um, it's, it's certainly, uh, it's going to be very, very important to sort of a, the, the, making sure we get the right quality of mares, which of course that won't be a great problem because the interest in him is worldwide, but the right mares that fit, and of course most importantly the right breeders, the people who raise good horses uh, and, and bring on good horses, so he, it's all the elements trying to get them all mixed, and it will be trial and error as his stud career goes on, because you'll see that certain patterns of, will emerge in terms of pedigree and in, in confirmation, and, and so we'll be mon monitoring that throughout to try and streamline it into the, the making the best we can. And I suspect from here on in, so long as he lives, you will be getting many, many requests from, <laughs> from prospective businesses. I think he's going to be a millipede in terms of the shoes that people want. Uh, but um, 
it really has been just fantastic. The, the interest, we, we love it. It's been great. And you were uh, very vocal in your sport for, for the Kipco British Champion Series right from the outset, yep. thinking it would do great things for British racing. How satisfying is it for you that he has been a great gift to them? Um, I think it's... I think we have to sort of take a good view on British racing and think how lucky we are, especially I think the Queen's involvement is really pivotal in, in, in everything that happens, especially at Ascot obviously, and I think the champion says we needed something uh, to, to uh, really focus on and highlight our, our, our own national um, racing sport and and this has given him that platform to do it because imagine otherwise it would he, he, he you know he would have been racing elsewhere how do you think you'll feel when you wake up tomorrow morning i think i'll be quite relaxed not too sad no no we've enjoyed i can't be sad it's been a wonderful wonderful journey and it's just been a great that we could all be part of it thanks to thanks to prince carla teddy thanks so much for all your time these last few years